just to give you some figures, um, you remember last spring um, when uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, when a lot of border measures were introduced, uh, we had 17 different member states that had, not all at the same time, but uh, that introduced border measures. And the lessons we've learned at that time is it did not stop the virus, um, but it disrupted incredibly the single market and caused enormous problems. Um, that was a time when we agreed to coordinate together. And indeed, now uh, let's jump forward. In December, uh, we were down to four member states who had at a certain um, point uh, border measures. Now um, we are back to nine. Uh, different. Um, yesterday there was the technical briefing there, the different member states um, have been mentioned. So um, what we see here is, first of all, of course we have always to balance these two uh, important um, topics. On the one hand, to protect the health of our citizen, and on the other hand, to have free movement. We see at this stage of the pandemic that it is more important to look at regions that have the same epidemiological situation. That's what we have discussed with the member states, and we have agreed in the recommendation to uh, early inform the other regions if specific measures have to be taken, and uh, to do that in an appropriate way to discourage people to move around, mainly if they come from dark red or red zones, um, and this has been a recommendation put forward by the Commission, but adopted by the Council, so by the member states themselves. And therefore, I want to re-emphasize, it was a learning process that brought us there. The virus taught us that uh, closing borders does not stop it, but um, we see the disruptions, and therefore it's in our own interest to stick what we have agreed upon together. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of this press conference. I want to thank you all for your participation and wish you a good afternoon.